Hello, my name is Charles McNamara. I'm going to be a virtual instructor today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video. This information will help you review the F61 supervision of hookah establishments study material issued by the Fire Department of New York City. The goal of these regulations is to minimize the fire hazards that come with hookah pipes and charcoal. The fire department also requires that each establishment have at least one certificate of fitness holder on site, on the premises, whenever there are lighted hookah coals open. You will need to go to 9 Metro Tech in Brooklyn, New York to take this exam. Very easily accessible to any train to J Street Metro Tech. When you arrive, you will have to check in and let them know what exam that you are taking. You'll be issued a ticket and you must look at the board for them to call your number. The ticket system is easy to follow, but you must pay attention to detail until they call your number. The exam is 20 questions in length and you will have 30 minutes to complete this exam. All ABC questions. It's very important that you watch this video, but also read the booklet, understand the vocabulary and study material when going to 9 Metro Tech. There's a lot of useful information in the study material, which can be found free of charge from the FDNY's website. The exam is computer-based A, B, C, or D questions. Once you complete the exam, you will know right away if you have passed or failed. You must score at least a 70% or higher in order to obtain a certificate of fitness. Permits are usually valid for a period of 12 months. Every issue of a permit requires an inspection. Department of Buildings and FDNY will want documentation on the layout of the premises, the location where coals are stored, proper handling techniques, description and photographs of the equipment used to prepare the coals, and all other relevant particulars retaining to the application of storage, handling, and use and the disposal of coals. Supervision requirements. All hookah establishments require at least one certificate of fitness holder to perform personal supervision over the lighted and disposal of coals and the general supervision of coal storage. This means there must be at least one person on site with the F61 Certificate of Fitness Holder. Certificate of Fitness Holders should be aware that they may be required to demonstrate their knowledge and ability to perform the duties related to the Certificate of Fitness. The FDNY inspector may ask for the credentials and they must keep that license with them on their person at all times. operational and maintenance requirements. Coal storage for immediate use. There should not be more than one day's supply of hookah coals stored in the same room as the coal heating device used to prepare coals for hookah. Coals should only be lit for use as the hookah is ordered. In regards to the coals, they must not be stored within three feet of an oven or any other heating device. Hookah coals can be stored in a metal or other non-combustible cabinet or container with a securely fit lid. Outdoor storage, coals for use with hookah can be stored outside as long as storage of combustible materials is not located within 10 feet of a property line or within 50 feet of the nearest wall of any building, structure, or premise used for public gathering. Gisha pipe, otherwise known as goza, nagale, hookah, or hubbly bubbly. The bowl, where the shisha goes. The plate, which catches the ash. The 
the stem in which the smoke blows through. The gasket, a mechanism that closes and stops the smoke from going back up. The vase, where there's water. The hose, where the smoke exits the pipe. This is shisha. It's usually mixed with treacle and or honey and fruit flavoring, which is usually artificial. Coals are lit and placed on top of the shisha to make it burn. The person then inhales through the hose, which pulls the smoke through the stem and gasket into the vase, which is full of water. The smoke then mixes with the water, causing that bubbling sound, and flows out through the hose into a person's mouth and lungs. That's the basics of how a shisha pipe works. Preparation, use, and the disposal of coals. For protection, coals stored indoors should never be stored or placed near any stoves, fryers, grills, or any other cooking apparatus. Hookah coal, whether it's stored indoors or outdoors, shall be protected in accordance with the following precautions. Keeping the doors or lids to a solid fuel storage room, cabinet, or container closed, except when the hookah coal is being removed or replenished. You should also have signs marking solid fuel, fire, keep away. Storing hookah coal in its original packaging or in non-combustible containers with securely closing lids and an interval vertical dimension of no more than 48 inches. Lit coals used for hookah are considered an open flame. When not in an oven or approved heating device, the following safety measures must be followed. Customers should not handle lit hookah hole coals for any reason, even if using the proper utensils. Lit coals can only be handled by a person holding the certificate of fitness or a trained and knowledgeable employee. Lit coals are not yet used for a hookah device. They must be in an oven. Approved heating device metal container that is covered to control the flame. Lit coals must only be placed in hookah devices ready for immediate use. Used or discarded coals must be kept in a metal or other non-combustible container with a cover. All ashes, cinder to fire debris, must be wetted down thoroughly to put out any possible continuation of fire in those lit coals. All surfaces, including tables and floors where hookah may be located, must be made of non-combustible material or fully protected by a non-combustible mat. Artificial decoration and vegetation, including artificial trees, must be flame resistant. Documentation of such certification shall be submitted to the department upon request and as required by the rules of the City of New York. An affidavit signed by the C-15 Certificate of Fitness Holder attesting to such flame retardant treatment or inherently non-combustible material must be filed with the fire department prior to the installation or use of such articles as per the rules of City New York. Celestials, there's this whole idea that the Celestials have been fighting a giant cosmic war since they were created with other Celestials, so they need to replenish their ranks. Like Celestials have been killing other Celestials over time. Now they're starting to do a lot more space-based and more cosmic movies, so we'll probably get into that in future Avengers movies. And what about Thanos' home planet of Titan? Was something similar happening there with the emergence? Were the Celestials trying to orchestrate a similar thing? Were the new Celestials on Titan before it was destroyed? Thank you.
Practices regarding flame retardancy. After purchasing decorations that are inherently flame resistant or has been treated to be flame retardant, the FDNY encourage consumers to verify the flame resistance of these materials. The FDNY suggests that upon delivery of these materials, consumers should ask to witness a field flame test performed by the C15 holder who signed the affidavit of flame resistance. Even if an affidavit of flame resistance has been filed with the department, the consumer should be confident that the material will pass flame test. General housekeeping should include the inspection of doorways, aisles, exit areas to be free and clear of any obstruction. Secure storage areas to minimize liability and hazards of intrusion or dumping. Be familiar with the use of and the limitations of portable fire extinguishers and know where your fire alarm systems are in your building. Be aware of fire code storage requirements for permit and certificate of fitness. Safety data sheets, SDS, which are formerly known as MSDS, should be readily accessible in the event of an emergency. Make sure that you know all of the parts of the hookah and how they are designed to hold coals, and how they operate in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. Boom, your first 
first hookah from us has arrived on your doorstep. You're super excited. You're about to call your friends over and get this session going. But first, we're going to make sure that you have everything that you need to have the perfect hookah session. Before we get too far, we're going to make sure that we have all the items that we ordered inside this box and there's no missing or damaged items. If you do have any broken or missing items, be sure to contact us immediately and we can resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Before you get any hookah session started, especially your first one out of the box, you're going to want to make sure that all of your parts are thoroughly clean. That means your base, your hookah, and your bowl. Sometimes your hose, if your hose is washable. Hookah hoses are available in two different forms, non-washable and washable. Just be sure to check the product page of the, what you're purchasing to see if it's a washable or non-washable hose. Or feel free to contact us and we'll let you know. When you're filling your base with water, it's recommended that you stop at about an inch to an inch and a half above your downstem. If you don't have enough water, it'll be a very airy smoke and it'll be a little harsh. If you fill this up with too much water, it'll be very, very tight and it'll be hard to get smoke. This right here is your base grommet. It's what helps create a tight seal between the glass base and your hookah shaft. But it goes on the shaft first, not on the glass base first. When you're inserting your hookah shaft into your base, you just want to make sure that your base grommet is leveled all the way around. Otherwise, you might have an uneven hookah. But once you're done with that, just apply some pressure and this will slide right into place. And you can give a quick test pull just to make sure that you're all good, but you never want to carry a hookah by the shaft. You always want to make sure that you're holding it from the base. All right, this is your hose port. This is going to be a very important area in your hookah session because this is where your smoke is going to travel through. So you're going to make sure that this area is always clean and unclogged, and you're also going to make sure that you always use a hose grommet so you can actually have a very tight seal with no air leaks when you go to insert your hose for the first time. All right, so as we climb up this ladder of assembly, one of the last pieces that we're gonna put on before the hookah bowl itself is going to actually be the coal tray. This is gonna be what holds your lit charcoal and sometimes unlit charcoal. It's also gonna be where you kind of dump off some of your ash during your session from your charcoal. So it's a very useful piece. Make sure you keep it clean and there you go. All right, so the last grommet that we're going to be using on our hookah setup is going to be a bowl grommet. These things are available in a lot of different sizes because there's a lot of different bowl types on the market. And it can be used right on top of your bowl port just by sliding it over, or you can insert it inside of your bowl before you insert it on top of your hookah, just like that. And you're always going to make sure that you give it a nice, quick tug test. Make sure you're all good to go before applying any heat on top. Boom! Alright, we've reached the top of the hookah, and that is the bowl. Alright, so the bowl that we're going to be using today is an Egyptian-style bowl. These are available in a lot of different sizes, colors, glazes, but as long as you have this interior kind of set up like this, it is an Egyptian bowl. Um, it's probably one of the most commonly owned bowls, so we're just going to show you how to use it. It's very easy to use, so we're going to get into it with some alfakar shisha, which is what we have right here. I'm going to be using blueberry mint. So really to get this session going with a lot of different tobaccos that you'll be using is uh, just breaking up the shisha. As you can tell, it does come pretty uh, tightly packed out of the package. So what you're going to be doing, your main job is, is breaking that up with your fingers and just letting it fall into the bowl. So you can see just right there, it allows a lot of air to pass uh, through around the bowl and kind of get the heat evenly passed through your shisha. All right, so breaking it up once again with your fingers and letting it fall into place. You're really going to be filling this bowl about 75 to 85% full, and you can try that session out. If you feel like that is not enough uh, smoke for you, not enough flavor, you can add some more. And if you feel like that's too much, then of course you can bring that down just a little bit. But this is going to be one of the main variables on how your session is performing, is what's going on up, up in this area right here. All right, so there you go. This is very loosely packed. You basically just, like I said, break it up with your fingers, let it fall into place. Um, you can use a fork, uh, but usually on that first time around, I just recommend just using your fingers just so you can really get used to uh, filling up this bowl. Just make sure that you did not plug any of these holes that were underneath with any of the shisha. And you can give a quick test just by blowing just a little bit of air uh, on the underside of this bowl. But once we're done here, we're going to apply some tin foil, and then we're going to move on to the charcoal. 
All right, so one of the final pieces to your bowl setup is going to be your tin foil. Now, tin foil has a couple different styles. You can find it in a pre-punched and also pre-cut form, or you have your standard right off the roll uh, aluminum foil. Now, this is available in heavy duty. There's also thin versions. There's also paper thin versions. So really, um, the thickness of the foil will play a part in how many pieces that you use. But with a tearaway foil, you're normally using two pieces. And with these pre-punched ones, if it's very thick like this one, um, you'll be using just one piece. So the really important part of your tin foil is that you do not have any sort of sagging and that you have a very drum tight foil setup. So in order to do that, you can place your tin foil right on top. You're gonna fold with just kind of the grip of your hand to see the size of your bowl, just like that. So now you know that this is your ring. So before you tighten this all the way, just give it a slight tug, and you can see your foil start to straighten out. So using just the sides of the bowl, you can kind of pull down just a little bit to create a very drum tight, flat surface up here. This is going to help you have a very evenly cooked session. If you ever have any saggingness or kind of crinkled foil up here, um, it can cause your bowl to not heat properly, but it can also cause your shisha to burn funny. And in funnel bowl setups, it can block that spire and cause some foil drag and not enough airflow coming through. Alright, so we're about to punch our holes in our tin foil. So you're going to have two options of tools to use. So you can use a foil poker. These things have a handle and a sharpened metal tip, which actually cuts through the tin foil very, very quickly, kind of just, just like that. But you also have a toothpick as an option. Um, toothpicks are great for people that like a little bit larger holes. You don't have to use as many holes because these holes are a little bit larger. But what you're also going to want to pay attention to is the sharpness of the toothpick. If you're using a dull toothpick, you'll actually have trouble getting through the tin foil, and it can cause the tin foil to sink in a little bit and uh, cause a harsh bowl. So whenever you're using it, just make sure you have a nice sharp tip, and you'll be able to punch through just very quickly, just like that. So what we're going to be doing is punching through about... Uh, around 25, 35 uh, holes. Could be more, could be less. It's really going to depend on your style. Um, the more holes that you have allow some heat to escape, um, but it's also going to give you some airflow. If you don't have enough holes in your bowl, um, your heat will be trapped inside of this. It'll also create um, kind of a more restricted inhale and a very hot inhale. So there's um, a couple different uh, tweaks that you can make to this in order to get the session that you want. Um, it just really just kind of plays into how you do this top part. Um, you can poke in several different styles. You can do a full ring around. You can do it left to right, up to down, zigzag, or just do random. Alright, now that I've got my holes punched in my bowl, let's get my grommet on and look at that. You have a ready-made hookah head you are good to go. Look at you go. Let's get smoking. Boom! Are you ready to get some heat going on your bowl? All right, so you're going to need charcoal for that, right? And we have two different types of charcoal pretty much on the market, and that is quick lights and natural charcoal. All right, so your quick lights, probably going to be what you've heard about the most. Your friends have these, your hookah lounge have these, and sometimes they arrive with your hookah right out of the package. So with this, the only thing that you need to get this coal completely lit is a single flame. That means a lighter or a torch. Now the natural charcoal route, it takes a little bit longer. It's going to be around 10 minutes or plus uh, to actually get this coal completely lit on all four sides. But with this, you will not be using a uh, lighter or a single flame or a torch or a flamethrower or anything like that. You will only, only, only be using a charcoal burner, just like that. This charcoal, uh, it does, once again, take a little bit longer, but the results are rewarding. Um, it's a little bit higher heat. It definitely improves the flavor in comparison to a quick light charcoal, and you can definitely get some very, very tasty clouds from this. All right, no matter where you light your charcoal, just make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. The smoke and smell that kind of comes off of these coals during the lighting process, you don't want around or in your hookah session or even really trapped inside your, your room, your smoking room, so just make sure that you've got a fan or just a well-ventilated area. Of course, you don't want to have any sort of clothing or flammable materials around your burner area, but just make sure that you give it some space and that you also keep your charcoal in a dry area as well to create a longer-lasting charcoal. 
All right, so while we have our natural coals burning on here, since it's going to take a little bit, I'm just going to show you really quick how to actually get your quick light charcoal started. So with your charcoal inside your tongs, you're going to take a lighter, and once you see that spark start to happen, it is good to go. So depending on the size of your bowl, it will require a certain amount of charcoal pieces. So with a smaller piece just like this right here, you're probably going to be using two small pieces. And then depending on the amount of heat that you want from your bowl, you can be using three cubes or two flats. It really just depends on your setup. You can use a fanning motion to really get some airflow going to your quick light charcoal to make sure that you get it glowing and fully cooked all the way around before you apply it on top of your bowl. So when you actually go to apply it on top of it, you just place your charcoal right on the edge and you can move this piece around to fully cook your bowl. Or you can start off a little bit closer to the middle with a second piece. If you want just a little bit more heat, you can add two pieces of quick light charcoal on top of your bowl. All right, so natural charcoal um, will basically be lit until the underside is completely cooked, at which point you're going to want to flip it. And usually this is at the halfway mark of your 10-minute to 12-minute counter. So once you have your charcoal in your tongs, you're going to flip it and let it rest in that same spot. And just do that for all three until your charcoal is completely and thoroughly cooked. All right, so once your natural charcoals are cooked, they're glowing, there are no black spots on them, that is when you're going to want to take them and place them on top of your uh, bowl. So when you do that, just make sure that you keep your charcoal kind of right on the edge to begin with and allow you to really build up the heat and choose your heat level. If you want a little bit more heat, of course, you can scoot them in, but if you want anything less than that, you can take some off, you can leave some on, and uh, really just really just choose your own heat. All right, so your hookah is set up and ready to go. Real quick, before you take your first pull, just make sure that everything is the way that it's supposed to be. Your grommet is in securely, your hose is in perfect, your charcoal is on top, your bowl is snug, and everything is the way that it's supposed to be. Once you're all done with that check, go ahead and take your first pull. And yeah, we've got blueberries. So take your first, your second pull, really get the feel of it. If you feel like it's a little too hot for you, go ahead and take one of your charcoal pieces off and you can put it inside your cold tray and kind of move the charcoal around and really just cool off the bowl or heat up the bowl. Now, if you're using quick lights or natural charcoal, either way, there will be some ash that builds up. And once again, that is what this cold tray is for. You can just dump off some of your ash, just let your charcoal just drop inside the tray and then you can place your charcoal right back on top of your bowl, just like that. So while you're smoking your hookah, if you ever feel like it's getting a little too harsh or it's getting too hot, make sure to use the purge function to purge out any old or stale smoke or hot smoke and also use this to cool off your bowl. You can do that really quickly just by purging, just like this. And doing that will clear out the base. It'll also push some cool air through your bowl and cool off that session for you. All right, you've done it. You have made your hookah. Call your friends over. It's time to smoke. It's time to party. Hopefully we've answered all the questions that you might have as far as getting your first hookah put together. If we didn't address that question, please put it in the comments below. And if you need any time, real-time assistance, make sure to log on to our website. We've got a live chat. You can email. You can call us. You can check out our blog for any more of our YouTube channel videos for any more tips and tricks. Carbon monoxide and portable fire extinguisher requirements. Carbon monoxide. A listed and labeled carbon monoxide alarm is required to be in every room where coals are prepared and used. For portable fire extinguishers, at least one portable fire extinguisher having a minimum 2A 10BC rating shall be provided and maintained within a 75 feet travel distance. You will definitely need to know the different classes of fires. A, B, C, D, and K. A is trash, wood, and paper. B, flammable liquids. Class C, electrical. Class D, combustible metals. 
class K, kitchen fires. In the event you see smoke and flames, always make sure that you immediately call 911 first. When it comes to using a fire extinguisher, just remember the acronym PASS, P-A-S-S, -S, which stands for pull, aim, squeeze, and sweep. What you want to do is pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the lever, and then sweep the hose from left to right. This should be done for small fires, but always make sure that you call 911 first. Portable fire extinguisher tags consist of a hologram strip. A real hologram strip is three inches long by a quarter inch wide. Counterfeit tags will not have a high quality silver hologram. The hologram on a counterfeit tag will not change color as it's moved against the light. Portable fire extinguishers must be inspected on a monthly basis. They are serviced every year. They are serviced every year by an individual from a company who has a W96 certificate of fitness. How to use a fire extinguisher. In this short video, we'll cover how to properly use a fire extinguisher using the PASS method. Now it's important to note that if a fire does occur in your workplace, that you follow these three important steps. Step 1. Once you've seen the fire, first grab the closest fire extinguisher, ensuring it's the correct type and class appropriate to extinguish the fire, and always make sure to keep your back to an unobstructed exit. If you do not think that you can put out the fire safely, make sure to evacuate the building. Step 2. Once you have your fire extinguisher, stand 6 to 8 feet away from the fire. Step 3. Follow the PASS 4-step procedure. First is P for pull. Pulling the pin unlocks the operating lever and allows you to discharge the extinguisher. Next is A for aim. Make sure to aim the extinguisher nozzle or hose at the base of the fire. The first S is squeeze. Squeeze the lever. This discharges the extinguishing agent. Releasing the lever will stop the discharge. The second S is for sweep. While discharging the extinguisher, start moving towards the fire. Keep the extinguisher aimed at the base of the fire and sweep back and forth until the flames appear to be out. Once the fire has been extinguished, make sure to watch the fire area. If the fire reignites, repeat the process. Always remember that smoke generated from the fire can be harmful and even fatal. Never attempt to extinguish a fire unless it is safe to do so. Now to recap the PASS four-step procedure. P is for pull the pin. A is for aim the nozzle. The first S is for squeeze the lever. And the second S is for sweep. At Grand River Occupational Health and Safety, we bring safety to life. Investigators say the man was negligent when he threw his hookah embers away in a trash can right next to the restaurant. Within 30 minutes, the building was completely engulfed in flames. According to charges issued Wednesday, surveillance video shows 23-year-old New Omar Elmi and a woman dumping the remains of their hookah in a trash bin near Lola on the lake around 3 in the morning. At the time, the two were lighting their hookah and it was windy outside. The sparks were flying when they tried to dispose of the embers. Prosecutors say the negligent act caused nearly two million in damages to the restaurant. They impacted not only other people's lives but their own. Uh, folks who had jobs don't have them anymore. A facility is gone. A business is having to rebuild. And we will. Owner Lewis King says it's been one of the most difficult challenges of his life, rebuilding his beloved restaurant from the ground up. But he's had a change of heart over the 23-year-old's actions. We've forgiven those young people. They make mistakes. Uh, they will recover, and hopefully they learn from this lesson. King says they are still trying to have a presence on the pavilion this summer. They've had food and ice cream trucks for kids, and on Friday, they're installing a trailer that will host a beer garden. He's determined to reopen bigger and better than before. It won't be the same ever again, but we're still going to make it feel like home.
And the president of the Minneapolis Park and Rec Board says the parks are for everyone, and they are focused on restorative efforts here. The 23-year-old is set to make his first court appearance next month. In Minneapolis, Christina Palladino, Fox 9. The coal used in a hookah in Mojo Bistro turned out to be the likely cause of Kamla Mills fire as per the Mumbai Fire Brigade's investigation report. The probable supposed cause of the fire is derived from flying embers that is burning lighted flying embers from the lighted charcoal cigri came into contact with the combustible material used for curtain in Mojo's Bistro restaurant and very rapidly spread to unauthorized highly combustible mash room of one above restaurant where no permission was issued the 15-page report said. The report was based on the testimonies of 17 eyewitnesses including staff of both restaurants, those injured in the place and the patrons who escaped. It also relied on posts, pictures and videos put up on social media by those present at the restaurant. Also new this morning, a fire at an uptown hookah bar overnight. Beverly Hill at Fountain View is the location. About 2 in the morning, crews arrived and quickly put the flames out. The building sustained some damage. At this point, it's not clear how the fire started. Thank you for watching this video, and please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ensure that you go to the fire department's website and review the FDNY study material for this specific Certificate of Fitness exam for the F61. It's free to download and print on the fire department's website. Once you obtain your Certificate of Fitness, it is valid for three years and the F61 exam will consist of 20 multiple choice questions where you must score at least 70% to pass. You will have 30 minutes to complete this exam. Good luck 